Credit card fees have gone up 160% over the last five years. Consumer lending is grossly profitable. I can't, I can't even find the right word to give you here. Consumer lending is obscenely profitable. We want to appeal to the broad scale, not just the upscale or not just a certain segment of the market. The average American household has more than $9,000 in credit card debt and spends more than $1,300 a year in interest payments. When I got out involved in this business back in the 80s, uh, we were paying uh, $15 for over limit and late fees. Uh, I just recently saw that raised to $43. Think about that. $43 if you're late, $43 if you're over limit. Uh, $86 on your credit card statement before you even do anything. Then your interest rate is going to jump to 21.9 and then all the way up to 28.9. So they want you to be late. They want you to be late. You know, one of the most uh, popular customers of credit card companies is right now people who've been through bankruptcy. Uh, the reason, as one of the vice presidents of MasterCard once explained to me, is we know two things about them. One is that they can't file for bankruptcy again. And the second is they have a taste for credit. And I said, what does that mean? And he said, well, they're willing to make minimum monthly payments forever. And that's where we make our money. And one of the vice presidents of Citigroup called me uh, in my academic office and said, I'd like to do a seminar for all of the executives here. And would you come in and present your statistics on bankruptcy? I had a new book out about bankruptcy. And he said, I think this is going to be very enlightening for people. And I said, sure. And I came in, and I had all my little charts and graphs. And uh, in effect, my message was, if you would screen the weakest customers, those who are overloaded on debt and least likely to be able to pay, you could cut your bankruptcy losses by 50% in the blink of an eye. And, you know, this is several hours of presentation, of course, been lots of data to back it up and arguments back and forth. And there'd been some discussion and there was much in the room. You know, hmm, well, hmm, talk about this. And then, fell in the back said, uh, Professor Warren, and everyone got quiet. And, you know, it's that classic moment when you realize that's the guy who has all the power here. And he said, very interesting. He said, but if we cut those people off, that's where we make all of our profits. And we won't make nearly as much money. If you cut out the people who are right down the end. If you cut out the people who are least likely to be able to repay. If you cut out the most marginal borrowers, the ones who are deepest in trouble, then you're cutting out the heart of our profits because that's where we make most of our money. The United States government has been collecting data for more than a century on how families spend their money. So I got someone to do all the statistics for me, who was in the government, who was very cooperative, and we matched mom, dad, and two kids in the early 1970s with mom, dad, and two kids today. Median earner, today's family actually has less money to cover food, clothing, insurance, games, toys, entertainment, everything you want to cover. The real point is the basics are driving families right to the edge what it costs to have a house, to have health insurance, to have child care, to have two cars so that you can both get to work. And you know, I run into some very smart people in our Congress, and I ask the question, so, so what's the long-term plan here? What happens when the bills come due? What, what do the grand thinkers have in mind here? And all I ever get is this sort of blank half-smile. There was a bankruptcy judge uh, down in Virginia who said to the credit card companies, how much of what you're asking for 
from these families is principal and how much of it is interest that has been racked up. And the credit card companies hemmed and hawed and said they couldn't calculate it and so on. He said, okay, just tell me over the two years, how much, if we take everything from two years ago as principal, how much of what you're asking for is principal and how much is interest? And the credit card companies, on average, for every dollar they were asking for in principal, they wanted two more dollars in interest and fees that they said they were owed. Well, think about that. That means for the average family who can't pay, they'll keep making payments of $50, of $100, but they'll never pay those debts off. They will owe those debts until they die. Death will be the only form of debt discharge that they will ever see.